Eileen Costello O'Shaughnessy was born in 1950 and hailed from Corrafin, Tume, County Galway. She married her husband, Gartha Tom O'Shaughnessy, and had two children together, Damien and Susan. Eileen was very young when she had her children and they all kind of grew up together. Unfortunately, Eileen's marriage would not last, but there was no animosity between them when they broke up. She took the children back to her home place and moved in with her mother, Mrs. Nora Costello. Eileen had Crohn's disease and was in pain for years, but towards the end of her life, she was starting to get a hold of the pain and managing it, which her mother was so happy about as she hated to see her daughter in pain, as would any mother. Mother and daughter were very close and there was never a cross word between them, except when you put the two women in the kitchen together, said Eileen's son Damien. 47-year-old Eileen was very popular and well known in the surrounding area of Corrafin. She loved to dance and she was always up for the crack and she'd talk for Ireland. She was an avid car player, 25s being her favourite to play. She didn't drink as such, but the odd brandy would never be refused. She tried her hand at hairdressing and sales, but in 1993, four years before her death, she was offered a job as a taxi driver. So she applied for her taxi license and she ended up being one of only 12 women in Ireland at the time to drive a taxi. She was well proud of herself and the job suited her perfectly, as she loved people and the chat. Eileen shared a taxi with another colleague, Christy O'Neill. Christy would use Eileen's car while she was working. She would do the day shift as she felt it would be safer. She'd start her day at 8 a.m. and work until 9 p.m., where she'd meet her colleague Christy on the Dyke Road to swap over the cars. On the 30th of November, 1997, this day was no different. Eileen was in great spirits as her daughter was due home from Australia and her nephew had just arrived from there. She had a busy day working and on her breaks she met with a friend for a cup of tea and met up with her nephew. Unfortunately, this would be the last family member to talk to her. Later that evening, she popped into Supermax restaurant to use the bathroom and get a drink. And this would be captured on CCTV and the last definite sighting of Eileen at 6 p.m. At 6.30 p.m. Eileen picked up her last known fare. At just 8 p.m. she goes to ring her mother using her mobile, but the call never connected. Either she hung up because someone hailed her for a taxi or the phone went dead. She was last seen in Air Square in the centre of Galway, talking to a woman and then heading towards Clare Galway. Her taxi was seen on the hard shoulder about three miles from the city and then further on, turning into Tinker's Lane, a boreen where Eileen would never be seen alive again. She was attacked in this laneway and beaten to death, dragged out of the car and left there. The killer then drove Eileen's taxi back to the city of Galway and abandoned it behind a bakery. Some teenagers were passing the car and the window was open and they stole the cigarettes and the mobile phone from it, which they later disposed of because it was dead this phone was found by the guardie down the road from the taxi. Later on that night, three bakery workers discovered the taxi. They went to move it to a safer spot, but when they opened the door, they could see blood and the guardie were called. Meanwhile, it's 9.30 p.m. and Christy is waiting at the Dyke Road for Eileen to arrive, but there is no sign of her. He rings the taxi base to know where is she. They hadn't heard from her, so Christy rang a few of the other taxi drivers and they started to drive around searching for her, but to no avail. The next morning, a farmer was heading to his field and discovered Eileen's body. He reported it to the guardie and they arrived to a gruesome scene. Eileen was fully clothed and had severe injuries to her head. The body was brought to Galway University Hospital and a post-mortem was carried out. Eileen died from blows to the head with a sharp object and she was not sexually assaulted. Meanwhile, the forensic team were examining Eileen's taxi. No fingerprints were found to be of any use and no blood or weapon was found belonging to the killer. There was no money taken and the keys were in the ignition. Also, her panic button hadn't been pressed. The guardie interviewed all her clients for that day and were cleared. 
Upon interviewing Eileen's mother, she said they had been receiving silent phone calls before the killing and after Eileen died, her mother received a call from a woman who was crying and saying, I'm sorry. This call was never traced. It's 2022 and it's been 25 years since Eileen was killed and it is still unsolved. It is actively open and Gardaí continue to ask the public for help. There is a reward of €30,000 for information, which has never been claimed, unfortunately. Their prime suspect is a man named Thomas Murray from Balgar in County Galway. He was jailed in 1981 for murdering an elderly gentleman, and in 1997 he was on day release and working in the area where Eileen was found. But he had an alibi for that night from a couple he knew. In 2000, Murray, still on day release, murdered an eight-year-old woman who was actually his teacher at one time. He was once again jailed for life. The couple that gave him the alibi later retracted their statement and said they were not with him on the night Eileen was killed. Gardaí over the years have visited Murray in Castlereagh prison and questions him about Eileen's death, but he has never admitted to it. He likes to play games with the Gardaí and loves the attention, so he is unlikely to ever admit to the killing. Eileen's mother died in 2008 with no answers to who killed her daughter. Her children and family still have no answers, but the Gardaí still work tirelessly on the case and are always pursuing every line of inquiry that comes in.